Hello. Hello. Yes, you ready? You got your Bible? Well, I have my Bible here, yeah. Okay. You said uh, Jesus isn't God, right? No. Who is he? I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That tells me nothing. Uh, when you tell me only begotten, that still doesn't tell me anything. So, okay. Um, here's what I want you to do see. before you talk over me. You're not going to talk over me. You're going to speak no, slowly. No, this is not what I'm talking over. Okay, well, let me finish. You're not going to talk over me. You're going to listen slowly, and we're going to go to Scripture, and we're going to deal with Scripture, not your opinion. So did Jesus exist before he became man? No. Okay, go to Hebrews chapter 1. Open up your Bible. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. I hope this guy's not a waste. We'll see. When you get there, let me know. What translation are you reading? Um, I have a King James. Okay. You read for me Hebrews chapter 1, slowly. Yes, sir. When you, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be a little faster. Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah. Start at verses 8 to 9. Read 8 to 9. All right. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is the is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, mm -hmm. hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Now who's talking to who? Who's talking to who? Let this to the sun. You see it. Um, it's right in front of you. Don't not, guess. Don't play games with me. It's in verse 8. Who's talking to who? But unto the sun he said, Thy throne, O God, yeah. is forever and ever a center who? of righteousness. Yeah, who's talking to who? If I have to explain that to you, you have no business talking about the Bible. Who's talking to who? True. Oh my goodness! And this guy wants oh, to this, teach me about this, this, this. Isn't this a quote from a scripture? I didn't here? ask you that. Did Listen you to the question friends? again. Listen to my question again. Don't be a dog who cowers. Who's talking to who? In the context, this is now the third time I told you, and you want to teach me the Bible. Okay. Now, in the scripture, it would appear that God is talking to the Son, right? Appear, or is it God speaking to the Son? Do I teach you? Need to teach you context, and starting with verse five. Don't don't play games and delay. Right. It's a simple answer. Who's talking to who? All right. Now, if you want to see God talking here, go no, ahead. No, I don't need to say it. In the context right. in verse 5, who's speaking from 5 all the way? Don't play games with me. I'm going to embarrass you. Stop playing games. All right. In the context, it's saying that God said. Okay, so God is talking to the sun, right? Him. Is he talking to the sun? In verse 8? This guy's a joke. Right, well, he's referring to the son, yes. Okay, so now read 10 to 12, verses 10 to 12. You better pay attention and answer directly, not tap dance. In verses 10 to 12, notice what God says to the son. Read it for me, 10 to 12. Um, and, thou, and thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as a garment, and if and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Okay, now I hope you're not going to play games, so I end up embarrassing you again. God said this to the Son, and what did He say to the Son at the beginning? Oh, Lord, you did what? At the beginning, thou hast laid the foundations to the earth. Yeah, and he did what also? He stretched out the heavens. The heavens are the work of your hands. Right. So God is saying to the Son, at the beginning, O oh Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will wear out, but you remain the same. Right? Your years never end. 
Go to Psalm 102 to see where he's quoting from. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Yeah. Let's see if you're going to be honest and repent of your satanic doctrine. Let's see. Go to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Okay. Read verses 25 to 27. Of all has thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. They perish, but thou art, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them wax old, like a garment and a vesture. And as a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. Keep reading. Th yeah. Thou art the same. Thy years shall have no end. Now, in the context of Psalm, in the Psalm, who is this being referred to? Who is this talking about? In this Psalm, you don't need to guess. Verse 1 will tell you, verse 12 will tell you, verses 18 to 22, 24 will tell you. Who is the one who's being spoken of that he laid the foundation of the earth? The heavens are the work of his hands. They, re they will wear out, but he remains the same. His years never end. Who is the psalmist talking about? Don't don't play games with me. It's right there in front of me in verse one. I think, it's really in it to the sun. No, in verse one, it's not talking to the sun there, right? It's Jehovah, the Lord, God, my God. Do I need to show you that? Verse one, verse twelve, all throughout the psalm, it's about Jehovah verse. God. Yeah, my prayer, oh Lord, and let my who's cry the Lord come there? To thee. Who's the Lord there? That'll be God, right? Which God? God Almighty, Jehovah, right? Right. Okay, good. So it's Jehovah God. Does Jehovah have a beginning? Right. Does did Jehovah have a beginning? No, he doesn't. Okay, now you better answer honestly, not top dance. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, this psalm about Jehovah is applied to the Son. The Son is now said to be that Jehovah who laid the foundations of the earth, who made the heavens with his hands, who remains the same, and his years never end. So the Father just glorified the Son as Jehovah Almighty, the creator, sustainer, who doesn't change. How can the Son be Jehovah if Jehovah has no beginning, but you want to prove to me that Jesus has a beginning? Well, as, as well, you said, this was applied to the Son, right? Yes, it was applied to the Son. So answer right. the question. Don't so play games with Psalm 45. This, this being applied to the sun wouldn't make this wouldn't necessarily say that the sun is God. Yes, it would, because the only God who doesn't change, who created the heavens and the earth, is Jehovah. There is no other God. Don't play the games with me. Go to Isaiah 44, no, verse 24. No Go to Isaiah 44, verse 24. How many gods created the heavens and the earth? Go to Isaiah 44, 24. 44. 24. And you want to teach me about Jesus, that he's not God. Shame on you, you son of the devil. Go to Isaiah 44, verse 24. 24. Yes. Thus said the Lord, my Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, that spread abroad the earth by myself. So how many gods created the heavens and the earth? One. Okay. So when Psalm 102 talks about Jehovah laying the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of his hands and he remains the same. And then it's applied to the sun. It only can be right. applied to the sun if he is that Jehovah God Almighty who doesn't change. So don't play games with Not me. Necessarily. Let's try this Not again. You can't apply a passage about Jehovah being the unchangeable creator to the sun if he's not Jehovah, the unchangeable creator. Creator, yes, necessarily, because the Old Testament says God did it by Himself. Right, but there are right. things in the Scripture where right, are, right, okay, yeah. There, are, there are situations in the Scripture where people, things were applied to people that things that 
people have never done will apply to them. You're, you're not listening. No passage in the Old Testament that describes Jehovah as being unique and different from creation is ever applied to a creature. Stop the games. I know what you're talking about. Oh. I wasn't born yesterday. How many gods are unchangeable and years never end? And how many gods created the heavens and the earth? One. How can it be applied to the sun if he's not that one true eternal God? I mean, the Bible gives an example of that. You're not listening again. You know what I'm talking about. So okay, you're not I listening mean, to yourself. Yeah. Rastafarian, you're not listening to yourself. You just said only one God created right. all things and doesn't change. How then can Jesus right. be described as that one God if he's not that one God, he's a creature? You're still not listening. No, he's, I'm, I'm not saying he's described. I'm saying that these things were applied to him. No, he is said to know? be that Lord who created heavens and the earth. Did you read Hebrews 1, 10 and 12? At the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. You don't get any clearer than that. And we haven't even gone beyond this passage, and you're stumped. Now well, let's try it again. Since only Jehovah God laid the foundation of the earth, only Jehovah God made the heavens with his hands, and only Jehovah God is unchangeable. His years never end. I'm still waiting for the answer, and you're wasting my time. How can this be said of the Son that the Son is that Jehovah God who laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his hands, whose years never end, if he's not Jehovah God Almighty? No, I mean, if you look at um, Levi... We when look at who Levi was set to have Levi. When Levi was set to have paid tithes to men. Are you listening? But Levi okay, let's existed. try this again. I know you're going to Hebrews 7, 9, and 10 to embarrass you. I'm not talking about someone being your federal head who, when he does something, it'd be credited to you because you are united to him. This is called federal headship, but you're too ignorant to know this. Let me repeat it again. How many gods created the heavens and the earth? Only one. How can then Jesus be said to be that guy, God? Levi, don't help you. It embarrasses you because the concept there is called federal headship, something you don't know because you don't know the Bible. Let's keep it simple. Don't impress yourself because you're going to embarrass yourself. We just got done saying only one God created the heavens and the earth. He did it by himself. How then can Jesus be said to be that God who created the heavens and the earth? If he's not Jehovah God Almighty, you didn't answer the question. Now, this is six times I've been asking the question. How can he be the God that created? You see, if we are talking about one God, right? One being, right? To equate the Son as one God would not mean one being. Not so? How many gods created the heavens and the earth and who years don't change? One God. Okay, one so God in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is that one God that laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his hands and whose years never change? In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is that? Don't, don't tell me you forgot. You read it. Who is that? See, you're silent. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Yeah, who is that God that laid the foundation of the earth, who made the heavens with his hands, whose years never change, in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12? Right. Who is that God? The Lord God. Who is it there? That is a... Who, some, that is, a, who that is, is a, it there a, in context? Let, okay, let's try it again. Who is it there? You're starting to now bark to like a rabid like dog. Shut up, you sun. dog, and answer the question. I know you're manifesting because the demon in you. In Hebrews 1:10 no, to 12, who is that Lord God? Who's that addressed to? Who's being identified as that Lord God? They're applying it to Jesus Christ. So who is that Lord God? You, see, you keep saying applying. Give me the answer who is that lord god who's identified I'm as the lord god i'm answering the take any quote from psalms okay, 102 so who is that to i'm going to hang up on you in five seconds who is that lord god there who's identified as the lord god who did it what's his name jesus christ is being identified okay jesus christ good now you're being honest the demon now is calming down and you may the lord save you from your demon so you just said jesus christ is identified as that lord god since there's only one Lord God who doesn't change and created all things, and that Lord God has no beginning, you just said Jesus has no beginning. 
You realize that, right? No, I said they apply. Why am I wasting my time with you? Because you're a kid, you don't know the Bible. Why am I wasting my time with you? Okay. Why am I wasting my time with you? You're not answering my question. You can't even do basic exegesis in Hebrews 1. Why am I wasting my time with you? I'm asking you, didn't they took Psalms 1 or 2 to apply it to the Son? How do you apply it to a creature when Psalm 1 or 2 is about the uncreated, eternal, almighty creator who never changes? How do you apply it to a creature? A creature is not uncreated. He's not almighty. He doesn't create anything. You just read Isaiah 44, 24, where Jehovah created by himself. You're still not getting it. Right. So why am I wasting no. my time with you? You don't know the Bible. You're an ignoramus and you're perverted. Yes, now, listen. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see. Go to Revelation 5.13. Final point. Yeah. Go to Revelation 5.13. Go to Revelation 5.13. Final point. Because you're a waste of time. And you try, You had the audacity to contact me to try to get me not to believe Jesus God. Shame on you. May the Lord have mercy on you or give you what you deserve. Go to Revelation 5.13. Revelation 5.30. Let's see if you get this. If you don't get this, we're going to end the conversation. I'm going to have this as a short introduction to why you are the sons of the devil who hate the true Jesus to your shame and humiliation. Revelation 5.13. Read it for me. Can you read Revelation 5.13? I'm going to give you five seconds. I'm going to hang up on it if you don't read it. Five. Four. MP. Hold on. MP. Get the hell out of here, MP. Go to hell. Get out of here, MP. I don't want you on my channel. Get out of here. Okay, now. Revelation 5.13. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Revelation 5.13. 5. Okay, guys. Should I hang up on this dog? Because now the demon is manifesting in him. Should I hang up on this dog? Read Revelation 5.13. 5.13, I'm going to hang up on you. Go to Revelation 5.13. I'm just saying. Read it for me. Read it, and I'm going to hang up on you. Don't waste our time. We don't care about your preaching. Go to Revelation 5.13. Read it. Read it. Read out loud. I'm waiting for you. Read it. 13, you said? Yeah, it's Revelation 5, verse 13. Every creature which is in heaven. Slowly. And on earth, don't, not fast. And on the earth. Hey, slow. You're going too fast. Slow. Read it again. Okay. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Bless, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever okay now did you read where it says every creature in heaven on earth beneath the earth in the seas and all things in them you read that right right that's every creature in, uh, in the entire creation right right so right you said right i want to say it again every creature in the entire creation right right okay you just proved jesus is not created because every creature in all of creation is giving jesus the lamb the exact same worship that they give God the Father. So Jesus is with the Father, distinct from every creature in all creation, which means he's uncreated like the Father is. He has no beginning. And you still want to rob Jesus of his glory, you son of Satan? Now you would realize that this is talking about Jesus as the Lamb. Which what has that got to do with the question? What has that got to do with the question? Every creature is separate from the lamb. You're still not answering my question. Don't play games. Every creature is separate from the lamb, and yes. they are giving him praises. And this is the same this, praise this they give to the Father. Ever. The same praise this they give to the Father for the same period of time. Throne. This is separating the one in the throne from the lamb. You sure you want me to show you the, the lamb is on the throne to embarrass you further? Because you didn't answer my question. Let me repeat my question again, and I'm going to embarrass you to show you where the lamb is. Before I do that, listen to my question again. You just admit everyone heard you, and I'm recording you. Every creature in all creation, you said that's every creature. Every creature in all creation is giving the lamb the same worship that the one on the throne receives, proving he's equal to God the Father in worship, and he's not a creature like the father is not a creature because he's separate from every created thing. But now you made the stupid mistake to assume 
that because God is on the throne, that means Jesus is not on the throne. Go to Revelation 22, verse 1. Go to Revelation 22, verse 1, and I have to send you packing. Revelation 22, verse 1. Would I be able to make any points on these things, or am I just You're going to, to make a point to that's going to deal with the passages accurately, not tap dance, because I'm going to embarrass you. I'm not here to hear your blasphemy. Go to Revelation, to Revelation 22, verse 1. Five, Revelation. Four. Yeah, read Revelation 22, verse 1. Oh, you need to stop being so read like the verse that. i don't care for your opinion love. you're a son of Men satan i don't care about you you're a son of satan wants to rob my jesus of his glory read revelation 22 Re verse 1. <laughs> are you gonna revelation read it 22 what? verse 1. verse 1. yes and showed me a pure river and a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of god and of the lamb how many thrones one throne and it belongs to who the throne of god see now you know you're a filthy demon throne of god and who it's right in front of you well, it says and the lamb wait but so, the throne of god and the lamb so the throne belongs to who god Okay. Doesn't the Bible say that he's to to in his father? Yeah. Right there. Thank you. Okay, guys. Short and to the point. You see the demons? The demons that fill them? It's in front of his eyes. Throne of God and of the Lamb. Throne of God. Throne. Throne of God. In the Father. All right. Anyway, guys, it was short barbecue. I hope you enjoyed it. You Christians who don't like my approach, get out of here. Go to Hades. Don't come to my channel. I don't want to hear your complaint. You're going to get blocked. You don't like it when I deal with blasphemy and sons of Satan the way I do. Don't come to my channel. Get the hell out of my channel. I'll embarrass you too. Shame on you. You don't have the zeal for the Lord Jesus. But if someone insults your mother or your daughter, your wife, you'll be zealous. You wicked, effeminate cowards. Don't come here and complain you don't like my approach. Go somewhere else. Jesus is Jehovah God Almighty.